Hello! So in this video, we're going to talk about the k-means clustering algorithm for blob detection. Um, k-means clustering is not specifically for blob detection, it's for a lot of things, but we will be using it to detect blobs. Um, in the last video, you learned a couple of very simple techniques for trying to isolate objects by masking them. So we're going to be starting from a black and white image where hopefully the things we care about are uh, white pixels and the background will be black pixels. Um, and to a human, we can see that there are three blobs here, no problem. So you might be thinking kind of what's the point of this algorithm. But remember, the computer doesn't recognize that the white pixels naturally cluster themselves into three discrete blobs. Um, to the computer, it's just a two-dimensional array of pixel values, and you know who's to say that this pixel right here is supposed to be associated with this blob and not that blob? So the goal of this algorithm is the input is a two-dimensional black and white image, and the output will be a list of cluster objects. And each cluster should know the pixel coordinates of its center, and it should have a list of all of the points that are associated with that cluster. And visually, we can represent this by coloring each different cluster with a separate color. Um, but the, the point isn't to make, make three separate colors of blob. The point is actually to uh, represent this information. So what we really care about is ending up with this list of objects. So an important thing to know about the k-means clustering algorithm is you actually have to tell it the number of blobs it's expecting to find in advance. So you're not just going to run it on this image and it's going to tell you, hey, I found three clusters. Instead, you're going to give it this image and you're going to say, you are looking for three clusters. And it's going to tell you, okay, in cluster one, I've assigned all of these points. In cluster two, I've assigned all of those points. In cluster three, I've assigned all of these points. Um, this might not strike you as a particularly helpful algorithm because, uh, you know, isn't part of the whole point. It's supposed to be figuring out what the clusters are. And you have some point to that objection. Um, however, once we've written this algorithm, there are techniques you can use to try and have it figure out uh, what's, what number of clusters is most natural for your input data. All right, so without further ado, let's launch into what is the algorithm itself. So this sequence of images uh, kind of de depicts the steps of the algorithm. Remember that we're going to start with a certain number of clusters. So in our case, we're going to uh, tell the algorithm that we want to be finding two clusters. The k in k-means is a constant that's intended to denote how many clusters are we trying to find. So the algorithm starts by you initializing k points at random. Each of these points is going to represent the center of one of your clusters. For us, we're going to be using uh, an object to represent the cluster. So you're going to initialize k cluster objects. OK, step two, you're going to loop over all the points of interest. So you could just loop over every single pixel in your whole input image. Um, but for us, most of those pixels are going to be black and we don't care about them. We only care about the white pixels that are intended to be the foreground objects. So if you wanted to uh, speed up the algorithm a little bit, you could first loop over and make a list of what are all the points that we actually care about. And then in all the subsequent steps, you would only be looping over that list of points rather than every single pixel in your whole image. Either way, you're going to be looping over your points of interest. And then for every single point uh, in, this, in this image, the green dots, you're going to be calculating its distance to each of the cluster centers. So if these are our two random cluster centers, for each one of these green dots, you're going to calculate what's the distance to the red center, what's the distance to the blue center. And whichever distance is shorter, you're going to assign that pixel to the cluster that is close, whose center is closest. Um, so you're going to add that point to the clusters list. So this picture uh, is a picture of what that would look like once you were done. So as you can see, all the points that were closer to the red X than the blue X have gotten assigned to the red cluster. All right. So then you recompute each cluster's center as being the average or mean location of all of the points in its list. So if you sort of look at all the red points, Clearly, this red X doesn't represent the center of the set of red points anymore. So that's why we want to recalculate it. So you'll loop over all of the red points, 
and you'll find what's the mean x coordinate, what's the mean y coordinate, and you'll set the center of your cluster object to be those mean values. And here you can see it's approximately there. If you do the same thing for blue, you get a new recalculated center approximately here. Then you repeat from step two. So again, we're going to loop over all of the points that we've previously assigned, um, but now the centers have changed. And so for each new point, we're going to say, all right, what's your distance from the new red center? What's your distance from the blue center? And you're going to reassign the points. So what that means is that you've got to clear your entire list of points for your cluster objects so that you can reassign them. So this image shows the result of that. So now all of the points that are closest to blue have become assigned to blue and similarly for red. And then you recalculate the centers. If I was going to repeat this same set of steps again, um, when I loop over all the points of interest um, and I find which, uh, which clusters they should be assigned to, um, you'll notice that nothing's going to change. Like all the blue points are going to remain as blue points and all the red points are going to remain as red points. If that situation happens when you're, uh, and then when I recalculate the centers, of course, the centers aren't going to move because the centers are based on the points that have been assigned to those clusters. And if the set of points in the cluster hasn't changed, then the recalculated center won't change either. So typically you would keep looping until eventually um, your centers don't change and that tells you that you've found a stable set of clusters. All right, so let's talk implementational details. So whenever you're trying to implement an algorithm like I just described, you want to think kind of what information do you need to keep track of? What are your data structures? Um, and then as a second step, you can think how do they fit into your algorithm? So clearly we're going to need cluster objects. Um, the information each cluster needs to know about itself. The cluster needs to know its own center and it needs a list of points that are, that have been assigned to that cluster. So I'm thinking we'll make a point object, uh, a point class and a point will just have a row and a column and it'll have getters and setters and maybe a two string and a dot equals method that will let you compare to see if two points are equal to each other. Then, for your cluster class, you're going to have a point object representing the cluster's center, and then you'll have an array list of point objects for all of the specific pixels that have been assigned to that cluster. Uh, methods. What, what behaviors are you going to want to ask your cluster to do? Well, we're going to be adding points to the cluster, so we'll need an add point method. Um, we might want getter methods, so we might want to get the full list of points. Uh, we might want to get the center. We'll definitely need a recalculate center method where the cluster will recalculate its own center based on its own array list of points. And probably a two string would be helpful in case we have to debug. Um, and I'm thinking it would be helpful to see where is the cluster center and then how many points have been assigned to the cluster.